Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and X-Plane 11 for the Courchevel Landing Challenge. Now in Flight Sim 2020, that is a formalized challenge with points, you can see leaderboards right there. In X-Plane 11, Orbix had released uh, their Courchevel scenery for free and so I decided to try it out about three weeks ago and tried landing various planes there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show my attempted landings at the Orbix Courchevel Airport for X-Plane 11 first and uh, those will be different planes. And then I'll show you the result of my Courchevel landing challenge in the new Flight Sim 2020. So here we go first actually with X-Plane 11. So my first plane of choice was the DC-3, which is sort of a beast of a plane and really good at doing this sort of thing. And this is the AeroWorks version of it. So it's freeware actually and really, really, really good freeware. Now the black box in the bottom right is because I was watching a rocket launch at the same time I was streaming these uh, landing attempts live on Twitch. So yeah, that's why that black box is there. And at least for DC-3 and the first attempt with the FA-18, there won't be audio because I was listening to the audio of the launch. So anyway, here we go. First, of course, we have to take off. Well, in the Kirchfeld Challenge in Microsoft Flights, and they don't require you to take off, but uh, since it's just a Robin DR400, I think, uh, that isn't very difficult. With the planes I'm doing in the Flight Sim, it's a little bit more difficult. Not with the DC-3, but you can imagine what hijinks I'll be getting up to. Anyway, uh, fly over the airport to get a sense of it. it. It might be actually a little bit difficult to spot it initially in the midst of the mountains if you don't know what you're looking for, so... I certainly had a little bit of trouble. Uh, this is the Orbix uh, Kirchevel scenery, uh, not some of the surrounding mountains, but the ones right directly in front of us. And it's pretty big, it's like two, three gigabytes. So yeah, it was definitely worth checking out, especially since it was free. Uh, so anyway, here we go with the DC-3 trying to land. You can see my approach there. And well, the scenery will, of course, look better in Flight Sim. But I do have the fancy panel in here. It's a good looking panel. All right. And I especially like the weathering on the paint. And uh, OK. And then I tried and break, but that was a mistake. Uh, you can see I'm nosing down there. And in x 11, they'll get you for that. Uh, I lose my propellers. Uh, you can sort of see in front there. Yep, they're gone. So I did damage and given that I decided to try again. It wasn't too bad. I was sliding backwards. I don't have any thrust to move forward so I couldn't go to the parking spot. So here we go. Take off again with the nice scenery and this is the approach and this time I won't try and like stop on a dime and uh, apply the brakes too heavily. With uh, tail draggers you generally don't. You don't try to apply the brakes. You just let them roll for a while and leave them be otherwise they do tend to pitch forward and so yeah a little bit of a roll forward there but not too bad and there we go do we still have propellers yes we do so everything is good and i decided to go ahead and try and park it so first uh, let go of the brakes it slides back a bit and then i apply thrust and we start moving up all right all is good so next up the aforementioned fa18 F, and this is a payware version by Kolimata, and you can see I underfueled these planes so that uh, well I don't think I underfueled the DC-3, but I definitely underfueled the FA-18. You can see at the bottom left there, we're carrying a very light fuel load for takeoff reasons, landing reasons too, and off we go. So yep successful takeoff. This is not such a successful approach. This is a bad way of approaching the runway. Ow! Ow! I crashed. Uh, and it actually shows you crashing. It's very nice. That's very important to me. And now we have audio because the rocket launch is over. So funny music. And I'm trying, I'm trying. The, that, that, abort that. Just abort that. Okay, one more time. I'll be interested to see if we get a Mach 1 plane for flight sim, how the scenery does when I'm flying low over the terrain at Mach 1. I do like flying my fighter planes at low level at very high speeds, but yeah, we'll see. Oh god. Okay, yeah, yeah. 
could not stop in time. I don't think the F-A-18 can pull that off uh, without an arrestor wire. So, yep, I decided to go on with something even less likely to pull it off. The 727 this is by Fly J Sim at uh, Payware. And one of the planes I will definitely continue flying, actually the DC-3, the F-18, this, I expect I'll be flying X-Plane 11 with these planes for quite a while still. Um, I'm not gonna get a 727 for Microsoft Flight Sim when I've got this in here, after all. So, and you know, most flights with the 727 are done at high altitude anyway, so it's not too big a deal that you have the fancy low-level VFR scenery. So. We managed to take off with it. You can see the V1, VR, and V2 numbers there. Again, light fuel load. So it's not too bad. Um, it was able to take off like that. And you can see the V-Ref there now. That is certainly one of the nicer features of the Fly J Sim 727. It's calculating those velocities for you on that pad based on the aircraft's weight and all and configuration. Okay, so can we uh, touch down safely here? Uh, no, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, we crashed. And it's actually doing the sort of KSP thing, Kerbal Space Program thing, where it's trying to decide how many pieces to break you into. <laughs> uh, you know, it has that pause where it's trying to do physics. I like that. It uh, reminds me of KSP. You know you've crashed when it pauses like that. And here we go again. Okay, this time we touch down right at the beginning of the runway. And I try and slow down as much as possible, but there's just not enough runway. We got reversers on and everything. Yeah. So I decide that that's the best I could probably do with the 727, I think. It's so pause. Uh, well, I, I like that it tries to calculate what's happened. I like that. That's important to me. Alright, well, as if those things weren't ridiculous enough to try and land here. The Concorde. Requested by my audience, of course. I was mostly interested whether it could take off. Now, of course, we've got a very light fuel load. Basically just enough to do this flight. Uh, just, you know, take a go around and come back. Uh, 4,000 pounds, I think it says over there. Or, sorry, kilograms. And it still grazes the trees. I don't know if the trees are collidable. I think... Maybe, but anyway, maybe not, but the terrain definitely is, so if we had hit terrain, that would have definitely killed us. So here we go, Ooh, this is definitely a skew, but again, I was mainly interested in whether I could get it off the ground. I didn't think there was any serious possibility of actually landing this. Uh, we touched down, it's, it's weird because it's got those really long landing gear and You'll note that on takeoff, I also had the nose up to minimize drag. Of course, on landing, I had the nose down. That was the Kolomata Concorde, by the way. So here we are in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 with the little Robin. I, I always want to call it the Reliant Robin. It's not a Reliant Robin, but I, I watch too much Top Gear. <laughs> so anyway, the Robin DR400, I think it is. Uh, yeah, I always get the DRs mixed up. But here we are approaching. This is the first attempt. A full disclosure, I did fly uh, the flight one previous time, the challenge one previous time. And that was just to see the airport, to make sure I knew where things were, and also to feel the aircraft a bit. I ultimately stalled that out semi-deliberately. <laughs> but I didn't, uh, I didn't actually approach the runway, so. Uh, this is the first time approaching the runway in this challenge. And that's how I did it on the first try. And 328, 328,000. I don't know. I mean, I can see the ranking. It's 22,000. That's not very good, is it? Uh, so definitely want to do better. The landing smoothness was bad. I didn't. But, uh, see, the thing about the feet per minute is that ultimately when you touch down, you're actually going up a bit. So the vertical speed indicator is a little bit, uh, not deceptive, but you know, you have to factor things in. The fact that Kurcheville has an upslope, and so your vertical speed indicator is not accounting for that. So here we go again. 
second time. But already this setup does not look so good. Uh, off to the side there. There wasn't any wind. I forget if there was any wind in x 11. Probably not. I think it would look pretty clear. Uh, oh! Yeah, uh, you could just... I, I like how the landing gear sounds here. It feels really rough right there. And yeah, 715 feet per minute. That would have killed the landing gear. So, third time's the charm? It is. Um, this is the one that I decided was good enough for me. I don't know how many people have actually tried the challenge or how many numbers there are on the list so that I would know my ranking is in like what percentile. I would have liked a percentile. I like to be in, you know, 95, 99 percentile kind of thing, you know. Anyway, uh, so I've uh, provided the entire flight in this time. The other times I just had the very beginning and then the landing part. But here I'll show you the full flight. And it's only a two minute challenge, really. It starts you in flight. And so here I am turning towards the runway. I always turn a little bit prematurely. I'm trying to correct for that. The previous times I was just way ahead of time. So making sure that you don't turn too early is a key thing here. And I didn't have track IR on me at the moment, so that would have been very helpful in this case. Uh, track IR could easily have saved me a lot of trouble and made it easier to land. So next time I try this, I'll probably try it with track IR. There are other landing scenarios available and you can play them separately but they're not stated as challenges so I don't know if you get a score for those. But I'm sure they'll rotate through them so Courchevel is just the first one and then they'll rotate through. I think there are eight real difficult landings and then there's a variety of other landings that are um, just novel in other respects. But anyway, here the full approach to the airport. I'm a bit bouncy. I'm sure you don't want to be a passenger in any plane that I would fly. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit lax when I'm flying a flight sim, to be honest. But I feel like that's natural. Anyway, here we go. That's a lot of roll. Okay, straighten out. All right. Okay, what's the score? 887,000. So, uh, 6,600 6, place. Not great, but I didn't think I could do it much better than that short term. I mean, uh, landing precision, 4 feet. Ground roll, 131 feet. Landing smoothness, 73 feet per minute. I rarely try to land that smooth. So there we have it. And with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.